All right, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made my hot pile of compost and how to finish product in under two months. It looks a lot like this. Actually, it, it is this. I had access to a bunch of uh, sweet potato vines that were cleared. So I was gonna use that as my main source of nitrogen. They're pretty tangly, but uh, I think they'll do the trick. Time to choose a place for my compost pile. I suggest putting some thought into this so that you don't have to move it later, like I am going to do in a couple of minutes. I'm using a pallet and some old chicken fencing to raise it off the ground. Here's the pallet stats. Next, some wire fencing that I had hanging around. Look, it's gonna work perfectly. Keep it together with some uh, thicker wire. Okay, here we have the sweet potato vines, a bunch of fallen mangoes that are gonna be great for nitrogen and carbon. Lots of it. Let's get some holes in our center air access pipe. That'll be sticking down the center. I put it on this landscape cloth because you don't need this in the garden, that's for sure. Easy cleanup. Here it is. Get that in the center to give it some I'm just layering it here. You can see in the wheelbarrow on the right, I have some leftover um, manure. So it's add that in, some greens, a little bit of water, some leaves for carbon, another layer of greens, a little bit of water, some mangoes you see I got in there, water it down. A lot of people water their ingredients before to kind of reactivate the microbes that exist there already. But I just layer it up, layer after layer. Here's the pile, and let's wait and see what happens. Next day, not a lot of activity, just in warm. So, and it went down quite a bit though, so I'm gonna add some more to top it up. Okay, and here we are five days later. Okay, so this has been going for, oh, I don't know, maybe about uh, 30, 33 hours. And I added some molasses about five hours ago. I'm going to turn it off, fill up the watering can, and get it on the compost pile. <clears throat> Smells good. I'm turning the compost. Never really heated up. But then at the same time, I've moved it about 60 meters because uh, I decided to have it near the bathtubs. So I've cut the patata vines and I'm also adding some green leaves from the mango trees, I believe, for a nitrogen source. Watered it a bit and let's give it another go. So the flipping the compost pile is really where a second or even a third person would come in very handy. So still not really gaining any decent temperature. So uh, today's the day when we're going to get into some experimenting. So here's a tub, what Omar started with some effective microorganism thing with wheat about a year ago and just Omar went on his way and left it here. So after wrestling with this tub, finally got it out and I'm gonna mix it in with the compost before I pile it back in. Also, there's this pile of uh, chipped avocado trees, which has its own temperature, as you can see. So I thought, why not add some of this cellulose and green material into the mix as well? Get some of that worm leachate from the California red wigglers on there. And while we're at it, why not? Let's get some of this uh, worm castings in here. This will be a microorganism bomb 
I think this is what did it. Just wait and see what happens after I chuck this in. Some more leaves and let's throw some of my recently made biochar uninoculated at this point, but uh, that'll take place in the compost pile. That's the idea anyway. Mix it all up and let's get it back in to its form. So yes, not for the faint of heart or weak of back. This is a good little workout, as you can imagine. Next day, what's that? 52, 53. And that's just sticking in there. Let me try it in a couple different spots. Can you see the steam coming out of the pipe? Oh, good golly. Should I be worried about it starting on fire? 70 degrees and rising. You can really feel the heat coming out of there on your hand. Look at how much it's gone down in three days. It's consuming it. Consuming, I like that. The microbes are consuming it. So after a couple days, the temperature went down below hot and so I thought I'd turn it again. Look what we've got in here. That fungal action. So I've had the biochar in with my worms and the worm castings for the last week or so. So I'm just going to uh, collect the biochar out, crush it up a little bit and add it to the compost. Seventy-five, an honest seventy-five degrees. I don't know. That says seventy-six. Should I be calling the fire department? Seventy-seven. Okay, this is out of control. Too hot. I'm gonna turn it again. If your pile gets about seventy degrees Celsius or one hundred and fifty-eight degrees Fahrenheit, then the thermophilic organisms stop working, stop breaking down your compost. So we don't want that. So it's time to turn. Have you been watching the steam coming off this pile here? It's not cold outside. It's like 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. This is just the heat. 20 hours later. Okay, so it's finally not out of control. This is 24 hours later, not 80, that's good. So I'm not gonna turn it today. Just gonna leave it, see if it goes down a little bit more tomorrow. So five days later, the temperature dropped, so I flipped it again, and I thought I'd add some oats. I've heard that oat flour is really good for fungal foods. Let me know in the comments what you use. Do you think these oats will work? 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so this is seven days after I added the oats and uh, I haven't turned it at all. It just went down below hot into the active zone, which I'm normally quite happy with, but now I kind of like the hot zone. But anyway, it's kind of like going back to economy after spending time in uh, first class. So I flipped it again and I piled it up and six days later it hadn't heated up very much again so I called it done and then I went away for a couple of weeks. Looks like a little cake. I had bought some wood and I painted it green with plans to make a big sifter, but then I found this piece of fencing with chicken wire already attached around, so I thought why not give a give it a go and I just kind of leaned it up against the wood and I'm using the uh, landscape cloth to 
catch the compost. It worked all right, but you can see it's quite narrow. So I went to the original plan, drilled the corners together with a couple screws and put some braces in and uh, made it pretty strong. And then I just uh, bought some hardware cloth down at the hardware store. And uh, actually the professor came along, here he is, and uh, helped me uh, get it all together with some screws and washers. And got the job done. <laughs> Once again, thank you, Professor. Now, the sifting process goes much quicker if you have somebody to help you with uh, vibrating the sifter while you throw the compost on. You might want to uh, look into getting a vibration system with a drill or what have you. Here's the leftover. That's going to go back into the next pile as an inoculant because there's lots of microorganisms in there still. And here is the final product. Now you might want to sift it a little finer if you're using it for seed trays, but look at that. If you could only smell it, it's like a forest floor. Just fantastic. Final product. They say the best place to store your compost is in the garden, but uh, we're going to have to wait a little while. So here's a pile. Thanks for watching and uh, tell me about your compost story. Any tips or tricks or ideas are welcome. Start the uh, compost conversation. Maybe in the future I'll be looking at static aerated compost. Here it's a little easier on the back. Okay, thanks for watching.